Hello and good day. Our topic for today is pure and conditional obligations. Without further ado, let's start. There are different kinds of obligations under the Civil Code of the Philippines and they are first, pure and conditional obligations, second, obligations with a period, third, alternative and facultative obligations, fourth, joint and solidary obligations, fifth, divisible and indivisible obligations, and sixth, obligation with a penal clause. In this video, I'm going to discuss the first kind of obligation and that is pure and conditional obligations. Let us first define pure obligation. A pure obligation is one without a term or condition and is demandable at once. Meaning to say, ito yung obligation na kung saan wala siyang period or condition. And since it has no period or condition, this obligation is demandable at once. Meaning to say, this is immediately demandable. So pwede nang mag-demand si creditor ng fulfillment of the obligation from the debtor. For example, X obliges himself to deliver to Y his only car. This is a pure obligation because there is no period or condition attached to the obligation. And since there is no period or condition attached to the obligation, the obligation is immediately demandable. Pwede nang mag-demand si Y from X na i-deliver na ni X yung only car kay Y. Another example, I promise to give you 1,000 pesos. This is an example of pure obligation since uh, there is no term or condition attached to the obligation. And since uh, there is no term or condition attached to the obligation, pwede ka nang mag-demand sa akin na ibigay ko na sa iyo yung 1,000 pesos. Next is conditional obligation. A conditional obligation is one whose demandability or extinguishment depends upon the happening of a condition. In other words, um, conditional obligation is an obligation with a condition. Sa conditional obligation, kapag nangyari yung condition, it's either magkakaroon ng obligation si debtor or matatapos yung obligation ni debtor. For example, I will give you my laptop if you pass the CPA examination. As you can see, merong condition dito. At yon ay if you pass the CPA examination. So this is an example of a conditional obligation. Wala pa akong obligation na ibigay sa iyo yung laptop ko. Pero kapag nakapasa ka na sa CPA examination, magkakaroon ako ng obligation at yung obligation na yon ay ibibigay ko sa iyo yung laptop. Another example, I will let you use my car until you pass the CPA examination. This is also a conditional obligation kasi merong condition until you pass the CPA examination. As you can see, meron na akong obligation sa iyo ngayon. At yon ay ipagamit yung kotse ko. Pero kapag nakapasa ka na sa CPA examination, 
matatapos na yung obligation ko sa iyo. That means uh, I will no longer let you use my car once you pass the CPA examination. Again, sa conditional obligation, kapag nangyari yung condition, it's either magkakaroon ng obligation si debtor or matatapos yung obligation ni debtor. Next, let's define condition. A condition is defined as a future event and uncertain event upon which an obligation is made to depend. A condition is a future event because it relates to the future. Aside from that, it is also an uncertain event. Kapag sinabing uncertain, hindi sigurado. So, walang kasiguraduhan kung mangyayari ba yung condition in the future. It may happen or it may not happen. So, pwedeng mangyari yung condition in the future or pwede ring hindi mangyari yung condition in the future. Next, let's now proceed to the classification of condition. Condition is classified into the following. First, suspensive condition and resolutory condition. Second, potestative condition, casual condition, and mixed condition. Third, possible condition and impossible condition. Fourth, positive condition and negative condition. And fifth, the visible condition and indivisible condition. Unahin natin yung suspensive condition and resolutory condition. Suspensive condition is a condition the happening of which will give rise to the obligation. In other words, ang suspensive condition, ito yung condition na kung saan kapag nangyari, magkakaroon ng obligation si debtor. Here, the demandability of the obligation is suspended until the happening of the condition. So, hindi pa pwedeng mag-demand si creditor hanggat hindi pa nangyayari yung condition. Actually, yung example natin kanina na I will give you my laptop if you pass the CPA examination, yung condition dito ay suspensive condition. Kasi wala pa akong obligation na ibigay yung laptop hanggat hindi ka pa nakakapasa sa CPA examination. Once na nakapasa ka sa CPA examination, meron na akong obligation. Ibibigay ko na sa iyo yung laptop. Pero hanggat hindi ka pa nakakapasa sa CPA examination, hindi ka pa pwedeng mag-demand ng delivery of the laptop. On the other hand, resolutory condition is a condition the happening of which extinguishes the obligation. The obligation is demandable at once, but it shall be extinguished upon the happening of the condition. Meaning to say, ang resolutory condition, ito yung condition na kung saan kapag nangyari, matatapos yung obligation ni debtor. Actually, existing na yung obligation ni debtor. Kapag nangyari yung condition, matatapos yung obligation ni debtor. Doon sa example natin kanina na I will let you use my car until you pass the CPA examination, yung condition dito ay resolutory condition. Kasi kapag pumasa ka sa CPA examination, matatapos ang obligation ko. Hindi ko na ipapahiram sa iyo yung kotse once na nakapasa ka sa CPA examination. 
Next, potestative condition, casual condition, and mixed condition. Potestative condition is a condition that depends upon the will of one of the contracting parties. Meaning to say, potestative yung condition kapag yung condition ay nakadepende sa will ni debtor or nakadepende sa will ni creditor. That's why we have potestative on the part of the debtor and potestative on the part of the creditor. Potestative on the part of the debtor means that the condition is dependent upon the will of the debtor. If suspensive, the obligation is void. This is Article 1182 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines. Even if the condition is fulfilled, the obligation is not demandable. Meaning to say, kapag yung condition ay nakadepende sa will ni debtor and at the same time yung condition ay suspensive, yung obligation daw ay hindi valid. The obligation is void. For example, D is to give C 10,000 pesos if D goes to Baguio. Si D ang debtor at si C ang creditor. As you can see, nakadepende kay D yung condition. Nakadepende kay D yung pagpunta sa Baguio. This obligation is not valid since the condition depends upon the will of the debtor and at the same time, the condition is suspensive. This is common sense since kung nakadepende kay D yung pagpunta sa Baguio, kung nakadepende kay D yung fulfillment ng condition, then hindi na lang siya pupunta sa Baguio para hindi siya magbigay ng 10,000 pesos. That's why if the condition is dependent upon the will of the debtor and at the same time the condition is suspensive, the obligation is not valid. Next, if resolutory, the obligation is valid. Meaning to say, kapag yung condition ay nakadepende sa will ni debtor and at the same time yung condition ay resolutory, yung obligation ay valid. For example, D is to allow the use of his car by C until D returns from Baguio. Si D ang debtor at si C ang creditor. As you can see, nakadepende yung condition sa will ni debtor. Nakadepende yung condition sa will ni D. But take note, yung condition dito ay resolutory. That's why the obligation is valid. Potestative on the part of the creditor means that the condition depends upon the will of the creditor. The obligation is valid whether the condition is suspensive or resolutory. So, walang problema kung yung condition ay nakadepende sa will ni creditor. Yung obligation ay valid kahit na yung condition ay resolutory or suspensive. For example, D is to give C 10,000 pesos if C goes to Baguio. Si D ang debtor at si C ang creditor. As you can see, nakadepende kay C yung condition. Nakadepende kay C yung pagpunta sa Baguio. That's why the obligation here is valid. Next, D is to allow the use of his car by C until C returns from Baguio. D is the debtor and C is the creditor. As you can see, nakadepende kay C yung condition. 
That's why the obligation here is valid. Next, casual condition. Casual condition is a condition that depends upon chance or upon the will of a third person. Kapag sinabing third person, this is a person or a party other than the debtor and the creditor. Meaning to say, person or party na maliban sa debtor at creditor. Kapag yung condition ay nakadepende sa chance or nakadepende sa will ng third person, ang obligation ay valid. For example, D is to give C 10,000 pesos if D wins first prize in the lotto on the bet he placed this morning. Si D ang debtor at si C ang creditor. As you can see, nakadepende yung condition sa chance. Yung pagkapanalo sa first prize sa lotto ay nakadepende sa chance. That's why the obligation here is valid. Another example, D is to give C 10,000 pesos if X goes to Baguio. D is the debtor, C is the creditor, and X is the third person. Diba kapag sinabing third person, this is a person or a party other than the debtor and the creditor. As you can see, nakadepende sa will ng third person yung condition. Nakadepende sa will ng third person ang pagpunta sa bagyo. That's why the obligation here is valid. Next, mixed condition. Mixed condition is a condition that depends partly upon the will of one of the parties and partly upon chance or upon the will of a third person. Kapag yung condition ay nakadepende partly upon the will of one of the parties, and partly upon chance or upon the will of a third person, yung obligation ay valid. For example, D is to give C 10,000 pesos if C will marry X. D is the debtor, C is the creditor, and X is the third person. As you can see, nakadepende yung condition kay creditor and at the same time nakadepende yung condition sa third person since nakadepende yung condition kay creditor and at the same time kay third person then the obligation here is valid next possible condition and impossible condition Possible condition is one that is capable of fulfillment in its nature and by law. Meaning to say, possible yung condition kapag kaya siyang gawin and at the same time kapag legal. Hindi siya labag sa batas. Impossible condition is one that is not capable of fulfillment in its nature or due to operation of law. Meaning to say, Impossible yung condition kapag hindi siya kayang gawin or impossible yung condition kapag hindi siya legal. Meaning to say, labag sa batas. In this case, the obligation and the condition are void. This is Article 1183 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines. So kung yung condition ay impossible, both yung obligation at yung condition ay hindi valid. For example, if you can swim across the Pacific Ocean, this is an impossible condition since it is not capable of fulfillment in its nature. Sobrang lawak ng Pacific Ocean and nobody can swim across the Pacific Ocean. So hindi siya kayang gawin. 
Therefore, this is an impossible condition. Another example, if you kill X. Of course, this condition is unlawful, labag siya sa batas, therefore, this is an impossible condition. Take note, if the condition is not to do an impossible thing, it shall be deemed as not having been agreed upon. This is Article 1183 of the New Civil Code of the Philippines. Thus, the obligation is immediately demandable. For example, D is to give C 10,000 pesos if C does not swim across the Pacific Ocean. As you can see, the condition here is not to do an impossible thing. The condition here is not to swim across the Pacific Ocean. Therefore, this obligation is immediately demandable. So, pwede nang mag-demand si C kay D na ibigay na yung 10,000 pesos. Next, positive condition and negative condition. Positive condition is a condition that some event will happen at a determinate time. For example, D is to give C 10,000 pesos if C will marry X on or before June 30, 2022. The positive condition here is if C will marry X on or before June 30, 2022. Kapag kinasal si C kay X on or before June 30, 2022, merong obligation si D na magbigay kay C ng 10,000 pesos. Pero kapag kinasal si C kay X on July 1, 2022, lagpas na yon sa June 30, 2022, that means... Walang obligation si D kay C na magbigay ng 10,000 pesos. Paano kapag namatay si X on June 1, 2022? At hindi pa siya kinasal. Kapag namatay si X on June 1, 2022 at hindi pa siya kinasal, then walang obligation si D kay C na magbigay ng 10,000 pesos. Next, negative condition. Negative condition is a condition that some event will not happen at a determinate time. For example, D is to give C 10,000 pesos if C will not marry X on or before June 30, 2022. Ang ibig sabihin nito, may obligation si D na magbigay ng 10,000 pesos kay C kapag hindi pinakasalan ni C. Si X on or before June 30, 2022. So, sa July 1, 2022, kapag hindi pa kasal si C at si X, then merong obligation si D kay C na magbigay ng 10,000 pesos. What if namatay si X... On June 1, 2022. At hindi pa sila kasal ni C. Kapag namatay si X on June 1, 2022 at hindi pa sila kasal ni C, then merong obligation si D na magbigay kay C ng 10,000 pesos. Next, divisible condition and indivisible condition. 
divisible condition is one that is capable of partial performance. Under Article 1183, if the obligation is divisible, that part thereof which is not affected by the impossible or unlawful condition shall be valid. For example, D is to give C a car if C finishes his law course and 1 million pesos if C tops the bar examination. As you can see, separate yung dalawang conditions. Kapag natapos ni C ang kanyang law course, pwede na siyang mag-demand ng delivery of the car from D. Pero hindi pa niya pwedeng i-demand yung 1 million pesos kasi nga hindi pa siya nag-top sa bar examination. Kapag hindi siya nag-top sa bar exam, then hindi niya pwedeng i-demand yung 1 million pesos. Another example, D is to give C a car if C finishes his law course and 1 million pesos if C can get a copy of the test questions in the bar examination in advance. As you can see, merong impossible or unlawful condition dito. At yun yung, if C can get a copy of the test questions in the bar examination in advance. Since that is an impossible or unlawful condition, hindi pwedeng i-demand ni C yung 1 million pesos. Kahit na nakakuha ng copy of the test questions si C, hindi niya pwedeng i-demand yung 1 million pesos from D since the condition is impossible or unlawful. Kapag natapos ni C ang kanyang law course, pwede siyang mag-demand ng delivery of the car from D. Since this is not affected by the other impossible or unlawful condition. Next, indivisible condition. Indivisible condition is one that is not capable of partial performance by its nature or by law or agreement of the parties. For example, D is to give C a car if C finishes his law course and tops the bar examination. The condition here is indivisible since this is not capable of partial performance. Kailangan matapos ni C ang kanyang law course at magtop sa bar examination para Pwede siyang mag-demand ng delivery of the car from D. C must comply with both conditions before he can ask for the delivery of a car from D.